Dr. Denise Rassel and the on-site director here at Gilead Community Center. And Gilead houses the natural and the supernatural. We have chiropractic, uh, licensed Christian counselors, um, massage, nutrition, holistic medical doctor, a gym. Uh, we also do hands-on healing prayer. We can schedule for, we have the healing rooms where ministers will uh, pray for people one-on-one. -on -one. So also this facility, this room right here is, I'm not sure where to stand here. <laughs> this is the stand where I'm supposed to stand, right? <laughs> Right, Larry? Um, yes, yeah, so the sanctuary is open. All hours of operation we have worship, music, playing, so you can come in and just be with the Lord and, and pray. Or, you know, you're welcome here. It's a, it's a community building um, that you can come into and worship. We have live worship playing on the screens, and we also have uh, worship music playing from 4 to 6, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. So I think I covered it all, Larry. Yep. Got it? Good. Great. Um, so welcome to Gilead Healing Center. We're going to get started with worship, um, and we're going to enter in, and then we will take, we'll receive an offering um, after that, and then Tony Kemp will minister again. If you're not clear, we have three sessions today, 10 a.m., 2 p.m., and 6 p.m., and we're going to have there's plenty of lunch places around and break places. There's across the parking lot a little uh, area. It's called the Valley of Blessings. You're welcome to walk over there or uh, go over there and, and enjoy your lunch. You're welcome to stay in the building, too. So uh, blessings, and we'd love to enter.
a strategic giver, and you were handed a sheet when you came in of Bible verses. Um, I've learned that you want to name your seed. So whatever you're giving today in this session, you want to name it, whether it's an amount or attached to um, a scripture. I attach mine today to ministry. Oh no, I chose wisdom. So attach. Um, never give a seed without naming your seed. A seed of expectation or um, whatever the Holy Spirit is, is telling you to give today is what you want to do, right? Amen? So we're going to go ahead and receive that. Also, the Lord spoke to me this morning about... Sometimes in service or sometimes when a pastor or a minister is ministering, but such as last night when Pastor Tony was ministering to people, that you feel that it's for you or that word is for you. And in other places that I've been, they allow, they allow a place to receive or attach that, can't move, attach a seed that word or what is being ministered to at that time. So what I did is I put a bucket on this side and a bucket on that side. So if during service at any time, during worship, during the teaching, during the ministering, if something resonates with inside you, if you get a word from the Lord, if you want to attach that seed to that word go ahead and bring up a seed and put it in the bucket you will not interrupt the the ministering that's going on so there's one over there and one over there so if i could have um, my volunteers go ahead and through the room um, inside the piece of paper you will see there's a couple ways to give you can give um, make out your checks to gilead healing center um, there's a square that you can just scan with your phone and it goes through the computer um, and makes it really easy. Okay, so we'll continue, continue to worship as we go ahead and receive. Thank you. 
Accept our praise that you'll be glorified in everything that you'll do today. And we'll give you glory and praise in Jesus' name. In Amen. Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Let's uh, well, continue staying. And we'll introduce um, the apostle, this wonderful gift to the body of Christ. Amen. And whatever you need, 
God's guidance. So we're going to introduce to you this wonderful gift from the person of Apostle Tony Kent. Thank you for your time. You may be seated. Um, yeah, eventually I'll sit down. Yeah. Dr. Denise is so precious. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't she? Let's yeah. give her a big hand. Is there anyone here this morning who was not here last night? Raise your hands. Raise your hands. Okay, so that means I'd have to do a review. <laughs> right? <laughs> so it will be extremely short because we need to go on. Um, we started with the scripture, uh, 2 Peter 3.18. This is what it says. But grow in the grace and implication, intimate knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So what we talked about is that when you are in Christ, no problem is permitted in your life unless there's a promise of God attached to it. Okay? If a person's not in Christ, I should pray for your sleep, shouldn't I? Yes, it has to pray. I know. And I should pray for your breathing, shouldn't I? Yes. And I should pray for your blood pressure, shouldn't I? Yes. And I should pray for your heart, shouldn't I? Yes. And I should pray about your, um, you know, sometimes we, how should I put this? We, we, uh, we worry about. Sometimes, because of our worry and our anxiety, it drains our mind, our emotions, and it decreases the energy in our body. Yes. Now, I don't know you, right? Correct. So, you know that, and I got interrupted <laughs> by God, because his heart and his mind is our view. Um, so what happens is, is um, when, I, when, when I was 16, I got saved, short version, and an angel physically appeared to, in front of other people to give me instruction. So angelic activity is very like normal in my life, and so um, this angel came up and he interrupted me because um, he doesn't listen to me, he only listens to the Father. And so the father um, had you on his mind and on his heart because you've been praying that he, for God to fix himself. You know, and you know, some stuff with this male and some stuff with this female too. Yes. Which God has heard that and he's going to do. But I, since I got interrupted by God, I should pray for your healing. Okay. <laughs> so should we pray for a healing? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I must be doing something wrong because I'm getting a lot of feedback. I must be holding the drink or something. I do stuff wrong. Let's pray for her healing. Oh, 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 I'm supposed to tell you. Oh, listen, I tell everybody. When I pray for your healing, don't pray. The reason why is because you're transmitting, you're not receiving. Okay? And I want you to receive from God. Now, because you're a woman, praying in your head is still praying. <laughs> If you were a man, I wouldn't worry about you. The man goes into his nothing box. The women don't have nothing boxes. You're always thinking. Okay? So I just want you to breathe and listen to my prayer. And receive Jesus as your healing. Now, I say this to you. Mark 11 says this. Whatever you desire, and you desire healing, because Exodus 15, 23, God speaks and says, Yahweh Rope, I'm the Lord, your healer. I'm the Lord who heals you, right? So you base it upon the word. So, from the moment I pray for you, believe God's healing power is going into your body. And there's some other stuff going on, too, that I'm not going to worry about. Look at what's more personal. You get what I'm saying when I do that. Let's pray for her. And I'm going to try not to mess up. 
Shall we pray for her healing? Yes. yes. Lord Jesus, you said, use your hands upon the sick and they shall recover. I curse every disease in this woman's body. Die, dissipate, and disappear. Lord Jesus, the word for recover means that person from the moment hands are laid will get better and better and better for their complete good health. Lord, deliver her from this nervousness, from this worry, from this anxiety. In Jesus' name, be free and be well and be Let's give the Lord praise for that. Um, what happens to me, and if, if I appear very nonchalant with supernatural activity, it's because it's a normal part of my life. I do reverence the Father, Jesus, the Holy Spirit. I do. Um, how shall I say this? I celebrate what the Father and Jesus do through angelic assistance in ministry. But if I seem nonchalant about it, it's because it's normal. But I do reverence the Lord. Does that make sense? So um, it's normal for me. And so when the angel came up, and he came up on this side, he started telling me, and his name is Revelation, I met him in heaven. So, and then there are healing angels. And there's, I told you last night, healing's going to begin today. Okay. So there'll be more healing today. And as the day progresses, as people pull on God, there'll be more healing. Does that make sense? Okay, let me see if I can get through this with you. Okay. I will try. So, growing the grace and the intimate knowledge of Jesus, our Lord and Savior. So, outside of Christ, if you have a problem, suffer, have to get somebody else to solve it, or you solve it on your own. But in Christ, no problem can come to you unless it's attached to a promise. Between the promise and the problem, you have to ask the Lord a question. And here's the question. Statement. Lord, you're God Almighty. You could have stopped this, but you didn't. You and your wisdom So who and what do you want to be within me now that unless this problem was here, you could not have been that to me before? Then he gives you a promise that reveals who and what he is, that he wants to be to you, that he wants to be within you. And here's the thing. The Father and Jesus want to do something within you before he would do something for you. Because he's interested in your personal if the father just fixes the problem without letting you go through a process, he's done something for you, but he hasn't matured you. So sometimes there's this process before there's this encounter. Okay. So then, he gives you a promise with conditions. Everybody said, there's something you gotta do. There's something I gotta do. I can see it's gonna be that kind of a day. <laughs> um, So, um, can I ask you a question? Do you have a journal? No. You know why you journal? Okay. It helps you know what you're thinking, what you're feeling, and it helps record um, your journal. Right? Okay. And so, in this journal, you're supposed to. So, it helps you see what you're thinking. Okay. Have you noticed the same, I'll say, challenges keep coming down the same road? Okay? So, 
solve the problem, right? And so you know how the Holy Spirit's been bringing the Word of God promises to you? Okay. Now, I don't know if you're like me most times. I say this. I say this. Sometimes. Sometimes. I'm just a wee bit stubborn. Just a wee bit. And a wee bit slow to obey. You know, are you able to relate to that at all? No. So, but then when I do, God moves. You know what I mean? And so, so, so this thing of 2 Corinthians 10 and 5, the weapons of a warfare not carnal, mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, right? Casting down imaginations, right? Bringing in every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ, right? Because, you know, sometimes we have these mind battles. So, but here's the thing. Um, sometimes we have this brain chatter. Have you ever noticed that as soon as you go to pray, all of a sudden, all this stuff you need to do comes to you? You've been knowing it all day, but it only really hits you when you get ready to pray. So it's a distraction to get in the way of your intimate knowledge of God. But it's getting ready to change. So I, um, I'm going to say scriptures that you know. Ready? Let the peace of God rule in your heart. May the peace of God, which um, passes all intellectual understanding, guard, keep, and umpire your mind. Paul said, the things that you've seen, you've heard, that you've observed in my life, do, and the God of peace will be with you. Right? Isaiah 26 and 3 says, you will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed up. By the way, in the Hebrew, perfect peace is shalom, shalom. Okay? So, there's a supernatural peace that's coming upon you. Okay? And, let's just say it like this. Some things that have been on your mind are going to be removed. Some burdens that you've been carrying. Now, are you one of those people that you carry the burdens of others? Are you one of those people that have problems saying no to others without feeling guilty? I give you permission from the mouth of God to say, Thank you. 
what's going to happen in the future. Huh? Oh, you ain't going to do it. Here's the deal. He hears you. And your ability to hear God is going to increase. Because you've been working for it. You've been praying out loud. And you have felt like, well, I don't hear the Lord, so I don't hear him. But you think so, too. <laughs> right? I can't even see the kids. Close your eyes and say, Jesus, touch me and set me free from false burdens, false responsibility, and guilt. Lord, you know I love you, and you know I love other people. Ready? Here comes the spirit of peace. Can I get somebody to lift up your hands and praise the Lord? Amen. All right. Let me work my way through this review. Okay. Everybody say problem. problem. Question. Problem. Promise. 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 Condition. Condition. Provision. Provision. Everybody say provision is an idea. Provision. Coming from God. Coming from God. Everybody say provision is in you. Is in through you. Jesus Christ. Everybody say, provision is in your hand. Provision in you. God brings uh, uh, the woman out of the man, and Christ in you, the hope of glory. Okay. Um, excuse me a minute. Um, I'm not talking to you because there's something talking to you because we need to build your system with vitamins and minerals. Hallelujah. Are you in any way aware of this? Yeah, I, I've seen uh, the nutritionist here.
Yeah, so you're doing the right thing because the Lord wants to um, improve your immune system. Okay? Um, he's doing something with your adrenals. Are you aware of that? You may not be aware of it. Okay, I know. It's my job. Okay? He's doing something with your energy. I don't know if you're aware of this, but he's also doing something in your blood system. Oh, okay. Are you aware of that? No. Okay. Um, here's the thing. Are you aware he's doing something in your circulation? No. I didn't think he was aware. That's why I put it in that form. Continue, continue, continue with this nutrition. Okay? Because it's going to increase your clarity of mind. It's going to increase your memory. Do you need that? Yes. I know. <laughs> the Lord is healing you supernaturally and naturally as you follow yes. this course of action. Amen. Yes. Amen. Are you aware that he's doing something in your bones? Mm -hmm. I hope so. No, I'm telling you he is. <laughs> so, but, okay, here's my deal. Sometimes I start out indirect. If you don't catch the hint, <laughs> I get direct. He's doing something in your joints. Okay? He's doing something in your ability to relax. Okay, yes. I know you be, you be, you be a little bit uptight. You need to chillax. That's black for take a chill pill. I have to entertain myself. Okay, so you're supposed to rest in the Lord. In fact, you know that I think is it Psalm 37 where it talks about rest in the Lord? Somebody do a fact check, a truth check. <laughs> Who got a Bible? You got a Bible? Bring me a Bible. Oh, you want to see my Bible? Yeah. It's scary. No, but you're going to be the one working with it. I just need you to turn to the Hebrew Psalm book 37. safely in the land and prosper. Okay? Take the light in the Lord and he will give you your heart's desire. Girl, you just love this dog so much. Girl, I kind of surprised you. He likes you too. He actually likes you. Okay. Uh, you know, in, in, the, uh, in the book of Colossians, I think it's around chapter 3, it says, uh, Dearly beloved, and let go dog. The Greek word is elenkos. It actually means he, he chooses you because he likes you. Commit everything you do to the Lord. Trust him and he'll help you. He will make your innocence as clear as the dawn. So that means you're innocent because he chooses you. And the justice of your case will shine of the Lord and wait patiently for him to act. Uh, I, I should probably tell you this, this word patiently, uh, actually it translates in Hebrew painfully. Yeah. It explains some of it, don't it? I can see you need a good doctor. Lamentations 3.25 says this, the Lord is good to those who wait well for him. Yeah. So you've been waiting for him. And it 
says right here that he would be waiting patiently for him, he will act. So he's acting in your behalf right now. And you're going to, it's almost going to be like a domino effect. You're going to see one change right after the other. In your mind, in your body, you ready? And in the people that are your family. Okay, because it's a family salvation. Right? Isn't that needed? Yes. It's going to happen. So, because you have prayed and prevailed, just like David. I give you whatever parts of your Bible. Somebody praise the Lord. Come on. Amen. Okay. Anyway, so I was trying to say. <laughs> well, what I was trying to say. Something, something that makes a crisis in you. Okay. And uh, <laughs> the Adam didn't know the answer was in him until God manifested himself. Sometimes you don't know the answer's already in you until God manifests himself, right? And so then, Moses, what's in your hand, right? And then the woman in, in uh, 2 Kings 4, what's in your house, right? Uh, it's good. So, and then so, um, so the prophet gives her instructions. Everybody say, provision comes to an act. Comes to an act. And then provisions in a place. God says, go to the brook Cherith, to the prophet Elijah, and the ravens will feed you there. Yep. And, and here's what's crazy. Ravens are unclean animals. Mm. Sometimes the way the Lord does it may not necessarily be your choice. Look at somebody say, I'll take it however the Lord gets it to me. I'll take it. However the Lord wants to give it to me. Amen. Amen. Uh, so anyway, okay, that's all the reviewing books. That's all. That's, I'm, I'm done. So, so I'm thinking, since you know this is like a healing center, we should talk a little bit about healing, shouldn't we? Yes. So, anyway, yes. um, here's what I should do. So, in the book of Luke, chapter 6, Jesus has these words to say around verse 36, 37, somewhere in there. I guess I could check and see. Let me check. Let somebody say truth check. Truth check. Chapter 6. Yeah, chapter 6. Yeah, 36. Be merciful, Jesus says, as your Father also is merciful. Do not judge, you shall not be judged. Do not condemn, you shall not be condemned. Forgive, and you shall be forgiven. I think I'll start with the last part. The last shall be first. So, anyway, I am in Louisiana. And I'm ministering. Everybody say, forgiven, you shall be forgiven. Forgiven, you shall be forgiven. So I'm in Louisiana, I'm ministering, and there stands before me a woman. She had an autoimmune disease, lupus, and she was blind in her eye. So sometimes um, it's not about revelation, knowledge, or discerning the spirits or anything like that. It's about doing an interview to get an interview. Sometimes, in some cases, you need to find the cause to bring the person to the cure. You need to do proper diagnosis to bring deliverance from the evil one. So I decided to do an interview to get an interview. So in my conversation with her, I discovered she, she had formerly been married. Her husband had an Everybody say rejection. Rejection. And sometimes when it's a very significant person, you move from rejection to self-rejection. 
and with a self-rejection to varying degrees, depending upon whether it's mild, moderate, or severe, um, as a person turns against themselves, their body also responds. Everybody say lupus autoimmune disease. Lupus autoimmune disease. So I went ahead and went further in this investigation. And so I found out when she was younger, this mother had two kids, said, stay on this side of the street, I'll get back. She was gone a while, so she, as a young woman, she decided, okay, let's cross the street. One child goes with her, the other one doesn't. And she looks both ways, and there's no cars coming. The child comes out real slowly across the street, and a drunk driver comes out and kills the child in front of her eyes. And now she blames herself. Everybody say guilt and condemnation. Condemnation. The child gets killed in front of her eyes. Everybody say trauma. Trauma. So she goes blind. So I have this conversation with her that goes like this. You're not responsible for the death of the child. It was the drunk driver. So you need to forgive yourself. You need to forgive your ex and the girlfriend. So, forgiveness is an act of your will in obedience to Jesus. Your feelings follow later. Everybody say forgiveness, forgiveness is an act of your will. Is an act of your your feelings will. follow later. Your feelings follow later. So, now let me tell you what happens to her lupus and her pain. It instantly disappears. Wow. Guess what happens to her blind eye? Now, before you think, ah, hey, that's a coincidence, hey, that that rarely happens. That was in Louisiana. I'm in France and Missouri doing a minister's conference, and a woman's blind in her eye, and I decide once again, I'm led by the Holy Spirit, to do an interview. When I do this interview, I found out she was really close to her mother. Okay? I found out that her mother had a terminal illness. Now, the woman's blind in her eye, and this is the words that she actually says. She actually says this. I did not see how sick my mother was. I said, oh, that's the key right there. She felt bad, and that guilt opened up a door for the spirit of blindness. Wow. So I said, just forgive yourself. Guess what happens to her blind eye? Boom, it opens. Wow. Now, before you said, well, you know, it's nice. It's okay, you got two. Okay, no problem. <laughs> I'm in Hereford, Texas. Um, you don't want to go to Hereford, Texas. <laughs> they have about a million cattle within a 40 mile radius, and it stinks everywhere. You're smelling other people's. So I'm preaching for a Mexican pastor, Pastor Mays, his wife, he can keyboard, she can sing like an angel. We stop at a convenience store, we run into a woman who just so happens to be blind in an eye. We invite her to church, she gives, comes to church, she gives her heart to the Lord, and 20 people get saved that night. At the church, she comes up to me and says, basically, will you pray for me? I'm blind in my eye. So, I wasn't busy, so I decided to do an interview to get an interview. Found out that she was a victim of domestic violence, and that she needed to forgive who did it. Guess what happens when she forgives who did it? Her blind eye does what? Wow. Oh, I think I'm on to something. So, now I'm in Illinois doing with the Spanish man who spent a long time in prison, had cancer. And people didn't understand him. He went to kind of like a middle class church. <laughs> he would think he had, let's put it this way, he had some real sort of a, uh, you know, he, he had spent time in prison. You know, he, he was a street guy. Okay. So he had cancer and he had bitterness, resentment, unforgiveness. And you know, the Bible says, you know, in the book of Hebrews 12, Look out for each other, lest a root of bitterness spring and trouble you by enmity on the body. So I said, hey, you got to forgive people. This is what he says to me. 
He says, as soon as he forgave, he said it was as if lightning struck him. Look at somebody and say, and it did. And From it heaven. Did. He goes back to the doctor, and the cancer is gone. Now you say, wait, 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 okay, now, well, yeah. So. Seth, I'm in Missouri now, talking to this man. I took him back in the office, because sometimes, you know, you need to do a private thing. Talk to him, he's got cancer. You know, um, see, sometimes we have theologies that don't help us. I know what we mean when we say God has everything under control. But the fact of the matter is, he doesn't have everything under control because he's been having trouble controlling me for like 65 years. <laughs> but now he is in charge. Look at somebody said, being, being in charge ain't the same thing as being in control. So, so if you believe that God has everything under control, you have to blame stuff that happens in life. Ecclesiastes, time and chance happens to us all. On God. And so I did an oxymoron with him because sometimes you have to. So I told him he needs to forgive God who needs no forgiveness. He got it. Translation, quit blaming God. So he quits blaming God. He repents for blaming God. He forgives God who needs no forgiveness. He lets it go. Goes back to the doctor. Can't find any cancer. I think I might be on to something. This is where it gets strange. So, so I don't know how far, how much I should tell you because I think I will tell you this. <laughs> Just because I can and I'm, I'm, I'm sometimes people need to be stretched. So I'm doing this minister's meeting in Joshua, Texas, and I feel this rain fall on me. And I'm thinking there's this leak in the ceiling. And I'm looking for the leak, but I can't find the leak, but it keeps falling on me. But, but, but because I had such great discernment, <laughs> after a while I figured out maybe this is the reign of the Holy Spirit. Apparently, I must have needed some help from heaven. <laughs> so I go to minister to this woman. She has one shoulder blade in, one shoulder blade out. And the Lord starts to mess with me because I have to reap what I sow. I mess with you. He messes with me. So he says to me about this woman. He says, she has bitterness, resentment, and unforgiveness against her own body. I'm going, hmm. Well, that scripture I just quoted, Jesus said, forgive, and you shall be forgiven, but he didn't say who or what, did he? So I said, do you need to forgive your body? She said, yes. She had been in pain for years. Soon she forgives her body, boom, she's totally healed. I think I'm on to something. So what I decided, is that I should do a survey to see particularly mostly women. You're 55, but you're still trying to act like you're 25. And you're mad at your body because your mind makes commitments that your body can't keep. And there's some brothers who do this too. You got menopause and andropause. Come on now. Because men go through a midnight crisis. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I found out sometimes people need to forgive their bodies. And when they forgive their bodies, they get healed. <laughs> I wonder if I'm talking to anybody up in here. 
And so because, um, um, because, because, just because, <laughs> because um, um, sometimes, Elder Larry, you have to provoke people to help them with their memory. So I'm fixing to make some comments that are deliberately provocative. I know they're provocative. I'm fixing to get under your skin, but I'm doing it methodically and on purpose. You women can't count. Y'all work like there's 25 hours in a day. Now the brothers can't count either, but their numbers only go up to about nine. <laughs> <laughs> so what you read in chapter 4 of 2 Timothy is a word from God through Paul to his spiritual son Timothy and this is what he says King James Version take heed to yourself and to the doctrine but if you go and do it in the Greek what he's actually saying to Timothy who by the time okay, I think it's first Timothy I think it's first Timothy. I don't think it's second Timothy. Let me check. I'm almost sure it's first Timothy. Let me see. It's verse 15. No, it's verse 16. 1 Timothy 4 16. Holy Spirit check. Take heed to yourself and to the doctrine. Continue in them, for in doing this you shall both save yourself and them that hear you. Verse 15. Take heed to yourself in the Greek means this. It means to get a hold of yourself. At this point in time, the church of Ephesus, which he was the bishop, the overseer over, was numbering 100,000 people or so. The implication was this. Timothy was so busy taking care of everybody else and everything else, he was neglecting himself. Come on. Say it. And the Holy Spirit was saying to Timothy, you need to get a hold of yourself. Because if you continue along this path, your ability to help others be severely diminished. Mm. You should be careful when you say to the Lord, speak to me. <laughs> Come on. So how many of you will be honest enough to say you need to get a hold of yourself? Raise your hands. Raise them up high and look around the room. So you got to repent again. How many of you were here last night? Well, boy, this is going to be a repentance weekend. So if you're able to stand, stand up because you really do need to repent. Now, here's the deal. Um, I get it. Um, I'll, I'll share this part. Um, in 1989, I had a surprise. It happened about 4 o'clock in the morning, month of December. And this angel comes to me. He's about 5 foot 10, 6 feet tall, white. Looks like he's between 25, 30. Very handsome, dark hair. And my spirit's out of my body, and we speed through the heavens. He's taking me. And I land in heaven. And uh, before the heavenly temple, just like Isaiah, I see lightning. And there's a door. And I know I have an appointment with God. And I know it's a closed door, except it opens back for me. And the angel walks in. I was supposed to follow, walk, follow him, and boom, there's the glory of God. Amen. And so I can't see the features of the Father because for two reasons. One, because of the light, and second, because of the smoke and the cloud. But that didn't stop me from trying. I really tried. I found that the book Paul wrote was true. He is in a light that no man can see through. But then when I looked to my left, which was the Father's right, there was Jesus. And there was a smoke. So, among other things, um, what, one of the things that came out of this time of visitation 
was um, the Lord said to me, every son that he loves, he corrects. Mm -hmm. So my dad was a workaholic. He liked to work. I was, and if the truth be told, I still am a workaholic. Because when you like what you do, So I'm getting a series of instructions from the Father. He's fathering me. And he's, he starts this conversation, this part of it. And he says, um, don't work so hard. And then he said, don't eat so much. <laughs> I've lost some weight. You need to lose a lot more. And then he said, you need to get more rest. So before you think I'm judging you, about overdoing it. Look at somebody say, it takes one to know. <laughs> so, you know, honestly, I didn't plan this morning. I, I just, um, I wait for the Holy Spirit to direct me. And I definitely wasn't thinking about this, but all of a sudden the Holy Spirit let me know I was supposed to go here. Because some of you need to take a chill pill. Hallelujah. So, because you know the Lord, I don't need to lead you in a prayer, but I'm going to give you three minutes to repent. And then after this, you can come up with a plan on how you can pace yourself more differently. Okay? So I have 1119, I give you to 1122. Y'all go ahead and pray now. Sebrushne, Pelestione, Krakedis, Alekeski, Prethes, Ashkeribuske. Pose, Prestendise, Ashevero, Padelzia, Posemen, Asolibre, Haskeo, Petia, Nahash, Shemura, Hesheme, Alasele, Eredista, Homed, Erebedista, Harade, Pescuna, periste, 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 periste. Poda, pecere, 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 pecere. Aske, evertule, hajemed, abrosten, didisti, estelare, eriandista, bohova. Pezendoya, pezendoya, pezendoya. Pezendoya, pezendoya, pezendoya. Verse libre. Hazakuye, 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 hazakuye. Hazekoya, 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 Pesi, Osiri, Haleteth, Haleteth, Haleteth. Sube, Hasile, Ariosu, Homere, Seesian, and Ahoshe. Hazabona, 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 Hazabona. Perike, Sakadishte, Perioshe, Tesiare. Hosebe, 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 Hosebe. So no matter how so much, how so much, how so much, how so much. Thank you, Father. 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 Hold it my seat. Now let's give the Lord a big hand clap, can we? You can take your seat. Now, um, I need to ask a question, because And I need you to be honest with me. And to the Lord. How many of you have somebody you need to forgive? Raise your hands. Raise them high. And this includes your spouse. <laughs> your kids. Mother-in-law, father-in-law, son-in-law, daughter-in-law. Supervisors. People who work for you. <laughs> people you work with. You know, there's a reason Jesus said, when you pray, right, in the model prayer, right, Greek, Father in my life, may your name be regarded as holy. Your kingdom come, Greek, now. Your will be done in this earth as it is in heaven, because the Father is always interested in bringing heaven into the earth, right? Give us this day my daily bread. Forgive me. I have to forgive them. Interesting. Do not lead me into temptation. Deliver me from the evil one. 
Five, because yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Number two. How many of you are here and you hold something against yourself and you need to forgive yourself? Raise your hands. Raise them up high. Okay. And most importantly, how many of you need to forgive your body? Raise your hands. Look around the room. Now you see why I'm preaching this. So, with regards to the ministry of healing, I'll just say this. Um, you will see the number of healings go up if you can get people to forgive. Before I do that, I need you. I need you to stand right here and I need you to face me. Where have you been going to church? Um, right here in my home. This is where I work the stand room. Okay. By history. By history. What do you know about depression? tell you. <laughs> By history. You know anything about anxiety? Yes. I know. I know. I have to demonstrate. Because people need to know that was here. This is what it was. So, by history. You know anything about headaches because of anxiety? Yes. Do you know anything about heart palpitations because of anxiety? Mm -hmm. Do you know anything about stomach disturbance because of anxiety? Do you know anything about backaches because of anxiety? Yes. Do you know anything about wanting to take a vacation from yourself because of anxiety? Yeah, all the time. <laughs> That's right. Did you know, watch my phrase, did you know that depression and anxiety are related? Yes. Not always, but many times. Okay. Are you aware that there's a spirit of depression and anxiety that's in your family life? And, for the most part, you have been delivered from it. Yes, yes. But every now and then, it comes to visit you. Yes. So, for whatever reason, I'm in, I'm in the kitchen. Your kitchen. And you know how you can, you fix the food. Now you gotta put the dish, you gotta wash the dishes and put them away. And out of nowhere, this this the spirit of heaviness and gloom comes on you. And it appears as if it comes sometimes for no reason at all. It just hits you, right? So, so now we've done washing. We wash the clothes. We've dried the clothes, and we're folding the clothes, and we're watching TV. But all of a sudden, it's like even though the TV's on, this thing comes, and it's like you stop paying attention to what's on the TV, and it's like you get preoccupied with this stuff, and it's like time is gone. Now, you're not possessed by the devil or nothing like that. It's not that. It's an oppression that comes from the evil one that hits you from time to time. Okay? Okay. Now, listen to me carefully. This, look at me. This is going to happen to you less and less and less to the point where it's going to literally become rare. And your resistance and your ability to say, please, mm, it's going to get stronger and stronger and stronger, okay? Because you're in the process of being 
healed from the spirit of heaven and spirit of anxiety. Okay? It's happening to you. All right? So just close your eyes and say, Jesus, I take my healing and my freedom right now. You ready? Okay, get ready. I speak to the spirit of heaven and spirit of depression. Uh, anxiety, lose her and go from her right now. Come on, let's praise the Lord. So here's where we're going to go. This is where it starts. Okay. How many of you are here? You have some level of pain or discomfort in your body right now. How many of you that just, um, how many of you that are here this morning, you're going to be here this afternoon, raise your hands. Okay, good. I'm sensing right now, and we're going to get to this whole forgiveness thing, but I'm sensing right now a gift of healing for back conditions. So how many of you have back conditions, raise your hands. Yeah, that's why I'm feeling it. Um, yeah. Okay. Looks like I'm me working with him. <laughs> Love the dog. But I think I'm supposed to start, um, I should probably explain this to you. Um, there are different, okay. I'm not going to teach this right now, but there are different realms in Christ Jesus. Ephesians 1 and 3 says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, past tense, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in the heavenlies in Christ Jesus. But in the Greek it means, translated three ways, territories in Christ Jesus, domains in Christ Jesus, or realms in Christ Jesus. Okay. The realm you have revelation in. The realm you have revelation in is the realm you minister out of. The revelation you don't have is the realm you cannot enter. Okay. Come on. Because every realm has revelation that becomes your point of entry. Just to give you three, if you look at the temple of Moses, everybody say uh, seven feasts. In the Hebrew, it's appointed times. You have seven. Everybody say you have seven. But there are three main ones. Everybody say Passover, yeah. Pentecost, yeah. Tabernacles. Yeah. So you have everybody say out of court, yeah. inner court, yeah. holy of holies. Yeah. Out of court, Passover represents the realm of faith. It's the biggest dimensions. Yeah. Inner court represents the realm of the anointing, Pentecost. Yeah. Smaller dimensions. It's a different realm. Yeah. The glory realm, Feast of Tabernacles, is the smallest at all. How you administrate in the realm of the spirit depends upon what realm you're operating in and out of. Am I making sense to you? Okay. All right. In the realm of faith, 
you work. That's why it calls it. Faith without works is what? In the realm of the anointing, you have your gift, but you have to work your gift. But in the realm of the glory, you don't work. It's seventh day. You rest. And you have the sovereign move of God. Okay. I should show you. Can I show you? So, here's what I'm going to have you do. I'm going to have you forgive somebody else, yourself, and your own body. Listen to my instructions. My instructions are very, very important. Because one of the things I learned about miracles, I should probably tell you this. I, you know, I hate to do this. I've seen more blind people receive their sight instantaneously than I can recall. I've seen more totally deaf people here than I can remember. I have seen cripples walk, people get up out of wheelchairs, I've seen sugar diabetes healed, I've seen cancer healed, I've seen gross disappear. This is this will take you out there further. I've seen supernatural weight loss where a person lost 50 pounds in the tertiary. I've seen body of parts appear where there are none, where there are none. I've seen Jesus raise the dead five times, even in front of me. Okay? So, I, you know, I, I almost hate to talk about this. But, I have this thing of waiting on God. I don't act alone. When the actual miracle happens, I don't act alone. He miracles are different than healing. You do have miracles of healing, but miracles are different than healing because it's the work of the miracles. It's not miracles, it's the work of the miracles, which means you gotta know what to do to work. What it means is this. The Father has to give you an instruction to follow, and then the miracle happens. Everybody say, you're getting ready to get some instructions. Okay, so first you're going to forgive. Second, I'm going to pray for you. When I pray for you, don't pray. You ready? Number three, if you have pain or discomfort in your body, as soon as you feel pain starting to decrease, stand to your feet. Everybody say, starting to decrease. Stand to your feet. Number four, when it gets 80% gone, come up to the front and look good. If you don't look good, I will send you back. Because all we do up here is look good. That's all we do. Right? Once you get to 80%, you keep believing, you'll go to 100. Okay? Why? Because the presence and the globe, the kavod of the Lord is here. When you forgive, you're going to activate it. Okay, I need to say this. Do I have anybody here who has metal in your body and causes you discomfort or pain? Raise your hand. Do I have anybody? I have one person? I have two people? I have three? I have four? Okay. Look at me. So... We see a lot of people have metal and it dissolves, it becomes gone. A lot of people. All right? I'll just introduce the thought. I'm not going to go into it right now, maybe later. When I say that, I mean the person has a metal and the doctor says they have metal and the doctor checks them and the metals become bone. 
can't say that. Okay? So. But the question is, is are you ready? Why are you talking to me? I'm African American. Y'all know y'all supposed to talk in church. Are you ready? Okay, so here's the first thing we're going to do. We'll bow your heads and close your eyes. And I am going to have you repeat this prayer, but I want you to say it to God, if you don't mind, please. Say, Holy Father, Holy Father in, the in the name of the Lord Jesus, you said forgive and you shall be forgiven. And so forgiveness is an act of your will in obedience to the Lord Jesus Christ. And so, Holy Father, by an act of my will, in obedience to your son, Jesus, I forgive everybody who hurt me or anybody I cared about. They are forgiven. And Lord, whenever their name comes up, I will remind myself that they were forgiven, they are forgiven, they shall be forever forgiven. Because I obey you, O oh God, right now. Holy Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, I forgive myself. I let it go. I let it drop. I'm done with it. I will not revisit it. And when the enemy brings it back, I will tell him, I already, I already forgave myself. That's over with. That's over with. In, Jesus name. In Jesus' name. Holy Father. Holy Father. In, obedience in obedience to your word. I forgive my body. I forgive my body. I'm not going to be angry with my body anymore. I'm not going to be upset with my body anymore. I love my body. I embrace my body. I'm going to take care of my body. By the word of God. And the, and the Holy Spirit. And I thank you, Father, I thank you, Father for, the for the blood of Jesus that covers me, that covers me. Spirit, soul, and body. Spirit, soul, and, body. And, I thank you, Father, and I thank you, Father, for the person, the, person, the, presence, the presence, and the power, and the power of, the Spirit, of the Holy Spirit working in my heart, in my, heart, in my, mind, in my mind, and touching my body, touching my body right now. In Jesus, name. In Jesus' name. Now I want you to take one minute and give God praise. One minute. With your lips. Come on, praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Lord, you are good and your mercy endures forever. Lord, you are good and your mercy endures forever. Lord, you are good and your mercy endures forever. I said, keep praising for four minutes. In a minute, I'm going to pray for you. Come on, lift up the name of the Lord. Jesus said, if I be lifted up. Hallelujah. Come on, give to the Lord the glory that's due to his name. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I praise you, O oh God, with my whole heart. My mouth shall speak your praise. Hallelujah. 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 Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the sun. While I live, Lord, I'll give you praise. While I have any being, God, I'll give you praise. Thank you, Jesus. It is written in everything, give thanks. It is written, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, his mercy endures forever. It is written, ha, in everything, give thanks. It is written that this is the will of God. Hallelujah. Giving thanks to the Father. Giving thanks to the Father in the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord, I give you thanks. Come on, 
30 more seconds. Lord, I give you praise. 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 Stop you from praying. Let me stop you from praying. Don't pray. Don't pray in your head. Just listen to my prayer. And as soon as you feel pain starting to decrease, stand up. Holy Father, I know you have angels here. Just like the pool of Bethesda. Where the angel went in and troubled the water. And whoever got in the water was healed of whatever disease they had. So, Father, right now, trouble the waters of healing. There's a river of life that heals the nations. Father, let people get in the river. Huh. And now I speak to the spirit of disease. I speak to the spirit of infirmity. I speak to the demonic power giving life to the disease. And I say, come out! to leave the body. And I command the pain and the reason for the pain. Die. Dissipate. You're discharged. Leave the body. And Lord, I speak to every cell. I speak to every tissue of the body. Be recreated. Be made new. In Jesus' name. Now, as soon as you feel pain starting to decrease, stand up where you are. Jesus is healing you right now. Exodus 23:25 says, "You serve the Lord, and He takes your sickness away." Psalm 103 says he heals all your diseases. Isaiah 53 says that Jesus was wounded for your transgressions. He was bruised for your iniquities. The punishment that, punishment that brings you peace was placed upon him. And by his sufferings at the whipping post, you're healed. 1 Peter 2.24 says by the sufferings of Jesus, you were healed. Exodus 15, 23, God speaks and he says, I'm the Lord your physician. I'm the Lord who heals you. Hallelujah. That's right, just as soon as you feel pain starting to decrease, stand to your feet. Jesus is doing it now. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. 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 Pray. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. As soon as you get to 80%, just come on up. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. As soon as you get to around 80%, you judge that. Just come up to the front and face the people. Jesus is healing. Hallelujah. Jesus took upon himself your sickness and your disease. In exchange, he puts health and healing in your body. Matthew 8, 17. Hallelujah. 
Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, whatever you ask the Father in my name, he gives it to you. Thank you. Hallelujah, Jesus. Jesus said, ask and you shall receive. Yeah, seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be open. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. For everyone who has received. He who seeks finds, and the one who knocks the door shall be opened. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. That's as soon as you get to 80%, just come on. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord, for he is good. And his mercy endures forever. Praise the Lord, for he is good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus is healing right now. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The scripture says, as Jesus was teaching, the power of the Lord become present to heal. His presence is here to heal. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I want her to sit down and relax. Sit down and relax. I said, I commend your faith. Yeah, just let us help her sit down and relax. Hallelujah. And just rest. Rest. Don't pray. Just rest. Hallelujah. Just receive the healing presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Just breathe, sister. Just relax. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Now, let's shift. Um... 80%, 90%, 100%, where you at? Talk to me. Where you at? Um, I don't know anything. <laughs> well, let's, let's, let's do this. Um, what's your first name? Bobby. Say it again. Bobby. And what problem did you have? I had pain in my um, vaginal stomach here. I've got um, implants and I've got um, some mercury in my mercury. And I also have back issues that say I don't and how long had you had that? Um, the back pain, it's been a couple, almost two years. Yeah, and now you're feeling good? Yeah. I need you to sit in that chair. Is that cool? <laughs> yeah. Be patient. Pastor, if you hold that for me. Buns to the back, woman. Buns to the back. Lift up both your legs. Thank you. Oh, let me have them. Girl, you got a problem. You go. Yeah, I want to get on the other side. Yeah, you 
switch over. What you wanna do is, no, come close. Come close, you wanna look at the heels. The, the key is the heels. Okay, you ready? Mm -hmm. Say, Jesus. Jesus. Fix me now. Fix me now. Let me know when you feel your left leg stretching on the inside. Yeah, you're getting fixed. The Lord touch her lumbar and let it be healed. Every disc, every bone, let it be healed. And Lord, um, you know, every bit of muscle strain, massage it and heal it and everything in its right place. Thank you for it, Lord. Okay, you're good. See you later, bye. Thank you. <laughs> What's your name? Lee. What, what is the problem? How long would you have it? What is Jesus doing for you? Well, it's been happening since I just had little pains in different places. And about four days ago, it was my neck. And thank you. Just went to um, surgery night. Mm -hmm. And it went away. And I think tonight it came back. Mm -hmm. And it's just calm and gone. Mm -hmm. And right now, it feels like I'm going to talk right now. Yeah. Well, you might as well sit in the chair, too. <laughs> Buzz to the back, woman. Buzz to the back. I like saying that. <laughs> Mr. Mark? Yeah. Other side. Other side. <laughs> Shoot the heels. You know Jesus is touching you now? Y'all can praise the Lord. God's doing it. Lord, from the, from the bottom of her spine all the way to the top. A little bit more, Lord. Yeah. Let, let that neck loosen, be loosed, be healed in Jesus' name. You good, girl? Yes. Okay, see you later. Bye. Hey, hand tap, hand tap. Don't leave it hanging. <laughs> High five. Yeah. I thank you, Lord, that you're in the process of healing us. Let it come a little bit further, Lord. Each service lets you get better, get more and more healed. In Jesus' name. Are you up here? Are you working? Are you up here? You're working on I have to check. Hello. What's your name? Angela. And Angela, what was your problem and what is Jesus doing for you? 20 years of uh, back pain from scoliosis. It's gotten better over the years um, with healing and prayer. Um, and I came in with no pain. Yeah. But when you prayed for her about the depression and anxiety, I felt. Yeah, I should pray for you too, over there. I told you the Lord told me he's going to be touching backs. Will y'all give me a little latitude? Say yes. Yeah. 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 Right now I see the words, the song of Solomon. I see the Song of Solomon over here. And I see these words. I am my beloved's, and he is mine. And uh, I see these words. His banner over me is love. And uh, I see this picture. I see this picture. I'm sorry. 
a song where I want to kick back and breathe and lay back on my hand. Why are you laughing at me? Woman, yeah, you got problem. How old are you, woman? Thirty-nine. You don't look it. Thank you. Oh no. This is hair dye. <laughs> That's what. <laughs> you just couldn't help yourself, could you? Because <laughs> if you don't tell them, they don't know. <laughs> Okay, so Jesus touch her, adjust her spat. Yeah, let her leg come out. There we go. There we go. There we go. Wonderful. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for touching my sister. Okay, I think you're good. Now, I should talk to you in Magdalene. <laughs> So, um, you know, um, praise and worship is good to me. Right? And it's good for you. It's always good for you to listen. It's particularly good for you to hear each other speak. Okay. You ever done that before you ever speak? Um, yeah. it helps, particularly instrumental and soft worship music, not praise, because your spirit gets excited when you begin to speak. I'm talking about worship music. Okay? Just worship your body because uh, that's going to be really helpful for you. So, I got to ask you two questions. And I don't know what I'm doing. But I need your help. Okay? I see J. Yeah. 
Pray for the system. You know, I ain't about all this working hard. I'm trying to decrease. Out.
ancestors in West Africa. See you later, bye. <laughs> Come. Yes, ma'am. You get to hold the mic. Oh, my. <laughs> you know the drill. Say your name, what your condition was, what Jesus did for you. Y'all can come this way if you don't mind. Good morning, church. We're friendly over here. <laughs> my name is Elizabeth Brown, and I am just excited because I'm just wanting to be obedient when we were doing the exercise on the pain release. And so the pain just, 80%, I said, oh my gosh, it's gone. It's just right here. Yeah. And How long have you had it? Well, it just come and go visibly here and there. Yeah. And I didn't, I didn't understand it, so. Well, you, you should sit in the chair. Okay, I will. I'm obedient. <laughs> I like her. <laughs> I got saved in the Baptist church. Okay. Where did you get saved at? In the Baptist church. That's why I brought it up. <laughs> <laughs> Can I have both legs, please? All right. So, left leg's a little bit short. This is what's really going to be interesting. Mm -hmm. Tell me when you feel a stretching on the inside. It feels amazing. I'm feeling something happening right over here. Yeah, Jesus is like healing you. <laughs> It's not my fault. Don't be blaming me. People be blaming me for stuff. I ain't got nothing to do with it. Yeah. I thank you, Jesus, for healing the lumbar and everything. You should stand up now. You said what? You heard a pop? You said you was 80% over there. Yeah, but something readjusted itself. Something readjusted like itself. Like a chiropractor failed. <laughs> yeah, like, you know, well, Jesus is a chiropractor, too. Yeah. <laughs> are you are you 85%, 90%, 100%? What's going on over there? It's just a ballpark. It just made a correction. It made a correction? You good now? Yeah. Oh, well, don't go all James Brown on me. I feel okay. good. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> I feel good. Go ahead. Bless you, darling. You can go. Jesus is the you. tell you a story. I was at this church and this woman, she had one of them heart meals and uh, she was young and her husband couldn't touch her for a year. She was in pain. Come closer. So what happened is, is God did something in all her pain to her. Her husband loved me because he could touch her now. Well, let me pray for you and let's see what Jesus does for your heart to give you a regular beat. Shall we do that? Can I have your hand? All right. Y'all going to pray for her? I thank you, Jesus, for touching her. Let her heart become regular now. Healing virtue, healing virtue, healing virtue. Come, my sis. I gave you the mic. Hi, I'm Sarah Samward, and um, I had a hysterectomy September 25th of this past year, and ever since then, I've been having really bad lower back pain and lumbar pain, and I've been going to a chiropractor, and I'm getting pain going to the pain clinic and getting injections. Um, but I was sitting there, and I felt sensation and it's still there a little bit but I feel like well, I know it's going to be good. Well 
yeah, because remember I told you, the Lord told me he was going to be healing backs today. There you go, woman. Ready? No praying. A. Wait, before we pray for you, look at me. That's a nice rock. Where'd you get that rock? My husband. Your husband. He's a bad boy. I know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's a good looking rock. Okay, I'll try to get back to prayer now. <laughs> Let me know when you feel your right leg stretching. There it is. Yeah. Jesus touched the uh, spine, the lumbar, the bone. Let her be healed today and now. Jesus, I love you. What are you feeling now? I feel like my legs are pulling. That's right. That's right. You're getting adjusted. Strange sensation on the inside, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Stand up. Let's see where you are. Give an honest report. Still there. Still there? Okay, turn around. Um, the woman that was here, point to where it's at. Yeah. She can't see it. It's right there. Put your hand there, will you? There you go. I'm putting my hand over her hand. Jesus, fix whatever this is. Lord, I don't know if this is a bruise, if this is a tear. Whatever this is, Lord, touch her and bring healing. Bring healing, bring healing, bring healing. Lord, let it get better and better until it follows in the Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. All right, sis, let's see what happens, okay? You know, it's been a blessing seeing you smile like Who's next? Come on, girl. Oh, no, you should oh, sit. <laughs> You're right. But tell us first, as, as far as healing, what's going on? So, for almost 40 years, I had some lower back issues. Yeah. Um, kind of felt it snap one day when I was lifting a big heavy bag of sand out of the trunk. Yeah. <laughs> And since then, on and off, I've had problems and it's gotten worse because I age, you yeah. know, um, sciatic all the way down, numb in the toe. Yeah. It's much better yeah. right now. I feel a cool kind of just a sensation. Yeah, Jesus is touching you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I'm confused. Will you help me? Yes. Okay, let me have a mic. I'm not sure if I'm seeing Lynn. She says, I know a Lynn and a Linda. That clears my confusion. <laughs> now, for some reason, I'm in July. And I'm, I, I, I don't see the year. I'm just in July. But I'm confused again. Because I'm in the first week of July, and then I'm in between the second and third week. Son that was born when? July 15th. Yeah, there we go. It's between the second and the third week. Okay. Do I have permission to just go in there? Okay. Where is your son? In this room. Okay. And the next question is, and I have to do it this way, okay? That's how you get good at this. How was he? Yeah. 
in his connection with the family. No, it's not a family. Yeah, beyond his immediate family. He's what? How much does he communicate with you on that day? So, what if I were to tell you the Holy Spirit is going to be my family, and you and him are going to be close? Don't you want that? Okay. It's almost like, you know, they have that saying, call your mother. <laughs> so the Holy Spirit is going to say to him, like, call your mother. I need to tell you this. You're considered a friend of God. You're not just a part of his family. I have to pray for you right now. Lift him up, woman. Yep, right leg. Say, Jesus. Why are you right leg short? I don't know why it sort of has been. <laughs> yeah, I know something's happening there. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Well, you know, Jesus likes to do stuff for his friends. <laughs> I thank you, Jesus. She's healed now for your glory. Amen. See you later. Bye. <laughs> See you guys. <laughs> Sit, woman. Talk to the microphone. Hi. My name's Angie. And What's your name again? It's Angie. Yeah. And I have um, just pain on and off with my knees and my ankles. And I don't make sense. I've had a huge weight gain. Just so much. I'm so, no, you stick with your sister. But it's been really bad for me last year. <laughs> so, do I have permission to do something? Are you guys okay? Yeah. yeah. Here's the thing, Jesus, Jesus takes care of me. So, how old are you now? I'm 20. So I'm going back around 24 years. This goes back to her. Does she know about what was going on when you were 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 18? Does she know? Do you know? I know of her. Yeah. That period? Um, no. Let me say it like this. Um, this was a period of, let's call it, Let's call it hurt. Let's call it, you know, everybody's got boundaries. And sometimes people cross boundaries. You know what I'm saying. And as a result of the crossing of those boundaries, something happens to you and something is lost. Right? And sometimes you feel like, okay, you know, this has kind of altered or changed me. You know what I'm going to say for that in your life. So, then we got these other complications, okay? Um, I'll say this is precise to start with. A person can do 10 things, they can do eight things right, but what gets really pointed out is the two things you didn't get right. You know what I'm saying, right? When you lean toward inferiority, okay? And, um, And then with that rejection, because it's a form of rejection, then there's this feeling of inadequacy. Like, I can't do this, right? But you're very capable, and you're actually quite accomplished. You, you 
probably should get rid of some of your perfectionism. <laughs> what do you think about that? Should you get rid of trying to be perfect? Because you bounce back and forth. Because that's the perfection over here, and that's the perfection over here, and you can't be perfect, and you can't maintain it. Okay? Okay? So uh, we need to get rid of that. So this makes me wonder. This makes me wonder what's chasing you. This makes me wonder if you know a Paul, or if you know a Simon, or if you know somebody named Al. Mm -hmm, what? <laughs> a good friend of mine from high school, Daniel Simon. His name is Al Simon. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you would catch on eventually. <laughs> It's called dark speech. It's called dark sense. Okay. Anyway, are you ready? Listen really carefully. I need you to play this. I'm in Syracuse, New York. I minister to a woman. She was flowing. I have a special love for flowing people. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you can't figure out why. <laughs> so Jesus touches her. She was diabetic. She lost 150 pounds, one pound a day for 150 days, mm. and her diabetes disappeared. So that was in, so I'm in Springfield, Illinois. I prophesied this woman about supernatural weight loss. What did she weigh? She weighed 400 pounds, and she lost 230 pounds. Okay. So we have all I used to do these services, supernatural weight loss services, where I would get people to repent for their eating. And people would shrink inside their clothes and have to grab their underwear. That's so awesome. And their pants. <laughs> one man lost 100 pounds in two days. Oh, yeah. We've seen Jesus do all that. Crazy. Listen. This one woman, she had a belly that was like this, and went and disappeared. And so, um, I have problems. Um, so, this one woman, she lost, this is when it got bad. When people would weigh themselves before they came to our service. Jesus would touch them, they would go home and would lose 20 pounds. Woman from Norway, she weighs herself, as soon as she gets back, she's lost 20 pounds. Okay? Woman lost 90 pounds. I mean, all kinds of miracles. Okay? Um, so, um, but what did you come up here for to begin with? How long? By the past year. Were you in pain today? Mm -hmm. And how are they doing now? They're feeling better. In your ankles and your knees? Mm -hmm. Or my ankles. Well, let me have your feet. Let him have the mic.
Uh, what was that dude's name? Al. Al, Al Simon, Al. huh? <laughs> Isn't that weird? It's weird. I know. I knew Jesus was messing with me. <laughs> Tell me when you feel something happening in your left leg. Huh? I do right now. Yeah. Now, tell me when you feel something happening in your right leg. Huh? A little bit right now. Yeah, it was only a little. You ready? Mm -hmm. I command these knees to be recreated and healed, and I command the ankles and the feet to be recreated and healed. I'm going to pray for you. You're going to start losing weight. So, huh? That's what I want to hear. Right? Yeah, stand over there. That's not the song. Keep going. That's the song. That's this one. I know I'm strange. I was doing a service one time. <laughs> I like cookies. I was getting ready to go there and then. No, God. Cookies are great. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, but I like it. They, or I like it anytime, but the rhythm comes across with this leg, right? So, you, have, you do cookies? Do you ever do ice cream too? Not much. Not much? So, that was her answer. God's going to give her supernatural health. Let's pray for her. Holy Father, my sister needs some supernatural health. And yes, Lord, she's going to change her diet. And yes, Lord, she's going to make some changes. And that part's going to be supernatural. But Lord, give her some supernatural health. From this day forward, let her begin to lose weight. Let her lose interest first. Let her lose, let her lose weight. I release that anointing that miracle in her being right now. Get ready. Three, two, one. I was having stomach. 
learning problems and having them for about 10 years. And um, it's just been causing a whole lot of problems throughout um, my life and just constant problems. So when we started talking about forgiveness and going through the forgiveness, I felt um, as I went through the process, my son was still doing some Roman this morning. Then after that, it's the Roman stopped. Then I got hungry. I was like, man, I'm really hungry right now. <laughs> then all of a sudden, I said, well, I'm hungry. Then all of a sudden, it's just the hunger pain left. And then it was just felt normal. So it felt better than I felt like, like forever. So I want to ask you a question. I'm just happy right now. <laughs> <laughs> so am I gay? He didn't really like push me to be like the best, you know. He was kind of like, kind of like it's okay that type of leader. He really didn't do nothing. Uh, he's more like a friend, more than really like a, a person that uh, wanted to push you to achieve everything. So he really didn't do that. Okay, so it wasn't negative. It wasn't negative, no. But he did. How's that put this? Uh, he did kind of put you in the show. Yeah, he did. Um, he kind of like gave me a lot of encouragement, said you should be doing this, you should be doing that. Yeah, and he was um, he was more of a um, an out front person because I was a younger soldier. I was more trying to trying to learn my way, trying to figure my way out. So he was more doing well and everything, no matter what. He was always recognized. So now I see James. James. Jimmy James. How much spiritual warfare would you say you've experienced? A lot. Yeah, a lot. And have you been praying for wisdom, knowledge, and understanding? Yes. Okay. So, okay, sometimes when the Lord talks to you, um, he gives you actual stuff, but there's the symbol behind it. Michael represented warfare. Okay. That's why it was military. But it really, it wasn't just natural military, it was spiritual military. So, and then James represents wisdom. Book of James. Right? And he was also the leader of the church in Jerusalem because he was the final. When they had the controversy in 915, it was after he spoke that things got settled. Okay. So the Father's going to release the spirit of wisdom upon you. And the Father's releasing. Okay, here's the deal. You have an angel warrior. what's getting ready to happen. All you have to do is praise the Lord for the victory. Because it's like there's a Jericho wall in front of you. It's fixing to collapse. You need it to, don't you? No, you don't have to. This angel is going to give you a breakthrough. It's coming from the Lord God of the brand. Lift up your hands. Ready? In the name of Jesus, I decree breakthrough in his life. Three, two, one, now. Mm. Mm. Mm, 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 mm. More, Lord. More, more, more. Yes. Uh, my name was Rick, and we uh, came last night. 
I, and that whole week I could hardly get off the couch because my back was hurting so bad. And, uh, and last night it was like we drove home 105 miles. Buns to the back. <laughs> um, I need to go back now. Um, I think you're around 26 and 27, 28, 29, 30. What happened in that period? I was going through a divorce and I got saved. Yeah. Came to Jesus and God healed my back. Uh, and 26, 27, when did all this start? As far as this whole situation that we're talking about, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. Uh, well, I had my own body shop and... What age? About that age. In yeah, the ballpark. and I a got, divorce? Yeah. All happened in that age? Yeah. And I your got back it. got healed, all that happened in that age? Yep. Okay, listen. You ready? Yeah. There's a rest. There's a restoration coming in terms of your identity. Yeah, I always felt. I always felt. Oh. Got it. D O N Don. So I don't know if that's Don. So, did he 
to get help you see your value? Yeah. Did it help build your personal esteem? Did he give you the acceptance that you didn't get before? Yeah. Did he show you something about who the Father is and who you are? Yeah. Let's live in that rather than what happened before. You hear what I'm really saying? Yeah. Okay. Now let me have the back. Okay, you ready? Yes, sir. Let me know when you feel your left leg stretching on the inside. No. Yeah, I'm gonna try it right now. Try it in. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh. I command the spine to be healed, every muscle, every disc, every ligament. You be healed right now in the name of Jesus. Hey, you know that spot I had that woman stand on? Yeah. There's an emotional healing going to happen when you get over there. Brother, you work it. Okay. Lift them up. Close your eyes. Say, Jesus. Jesus. You heal my mind and my emotions now. You heal my mind and my emotions now. And you set me free. You set me free. From my past. <laughs> now. Somebody ought to praise the Lord. I had a pair of red shoes when I was younger. <laughs> <laughs> Say, Jesus, Jesus, touch me now. Touch me now. I command the spine to be healed. There it goes. Pretty soon, I'm going to pray for you, Mama. I'm going to pray for you on a whole nother level, but it ain't time yet. How's your back feel now? A little better. A little better? All right. I thank you, Jesus. Bring the healing to completion. Um, I see, I see the August moon. So what's the deal with the month of August? Yeah, that's a, that's a symbol. Huh? That's your grandma's birthday? Who's your grandma? Your mother's mother. Your mother's mother.
Yes, sir. Um, I've had MS symptoms, I guess you would say, right now. Um, I was diagnosed with it back in 1996, and I had, prior to that, in 1993, when I started having um, issues with it. Um, it's just progressed, so I've had chronic pain since then. Um, so I've been on that for about 19 years. Yeah. Um, so That's 1993 or 96? 96. Okay, so how many years is that? So, um, you know, it's goes deal with that. I've been to a lot of different places. Um, I've had, I was in a car accident, messed up my um, sacrum a little bit, I think. Yeah. Um, and then I had a, I had a bulgy disc in my spine. Yeah. Um, you know, that looks like a snake. Yeah. Um, and uh, to come up here, um, he asked us to stand when I got under 80%. Um, I was scared to stand. subsided. I don't know how much 80%, but it is going down. Um, um, 80% less pain or 20% less pain? Subjective. Um, le less, less pain. Le I mean, it's, it's a lot, so I feel less pain. So, so yeah, I mean, right around 50% less pain, I guess. Yeah, so you, it's for so, you to judge. Correct, yeah. So it's, I, I feel about 50% less pain yeah. than what I did when I came. Somebody here. bring me a chair. So we're going to continue on. Yes, sir. Let me have both your legs. Oh, hallelujah. I can, I can do it. No, that's fine. Right. I got it. Right. Relax them. Relax them. It's kind of hard to relax. It's called going. It's Man, you're good. Okay. Yeah, you're good. Y'all going to pray for it? So Holy Father, he is down 50%. Continue the process of healing. At a certain point, Lord, straighten the spine. And then, Lord, all the muscles that have been pressurized and stressed, heal. Touch his nerves. Strengthen, Lord, his back. All the lumbar, all the muscles strengthen. Every ligament strengthen. Lord, start repairing and restoring every disc. Lord, strengthen his hips and strengthen his legs. Lord, take him through this process of healing. Lord, you said you shall lay hands upon the sick and they shall become well. Let him get better and better and better till he's completely well. Lord, until he does it, till, till every, listen, Lord, let every trace of this disease disappear from his body. And I thank you, Lord, you're doing it now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And Lord, give him feeling and give him control. Let's give God a praise. You stand right here. Now listen, I'm one of those people you pray for people again and again and again, and I'm getting to you. I'm just waiting. But I'm going to tell you a story, and I'm going to let these people take a break. I'm like Captain America. I can do this all day. So I'm in this meeting in Missouri. This woman's in a wheelchair. I'm in Missouri. Woman's in a wheelchair. She's doing praise and worship. And I'm watching her. And she gets up and walks. So I go to her at the church. I said, what happened? She said, the Lord spoke to me. I said, what did he say? He said, get your butt up. <laughs> so, so I got up. That was in Missouri. So I'm in Dallas. 28 nations are in this meeting. About five or 600 people. There's a woman there. She had metal in her body. And you should invite people with metal to come to the meeting because we're going to get to that for real serious after later on today. So um, the presence of the Lord comes into the meeting. I think the first meeting. I think we had like 169 out of the 600 people got healed. Metal, you know. So, so the next meeting, that's in the night, the morning. Here's what happens: the woman's in her wheelchair, and she hears a voice. She must have been from a different social economic class, because I, 
I wanted to know what happened. She said, the Lord told me to arise. So I got up. Apparently, I don't know about this other woman, maybe it was a term of affection, get your butt up, like get up in the morning for mama. <laughs> but with this other woman, the Lord just said rise. And she was totally healed. Goes up on the stage, she had to add the flags, and she was doing well. Let me tell you one more. I was in a, <laughs> Orlando, uh, uh, Florida. Predominantly white church, but they bring this, this fluffy African-American sister in a wheelchair. The doctor told her she'd never walk again. And I'm just preaching away. I'm not even focused on healing money. And I'm not there. And I look up, and I thought I saw the Holy Spirit there. And I thought to myself, was that my imagination? So we were praying. So I go back, I look, and there it is. Yeah, the Lord really is over there. I guess I better get over there. So I decided to go over there, and I start quoting scripture. And she starts moving. Sister girl gets up out of the wheelchair, starts walking. Says, can I run? I said, uh-uh, no. You, you, you know, your muscles have atrophied. Let's take it slow. And she got up and walked. Bam. So I'm in New York. And this woman's in a wheelchair. The pastor prayed for her, nothing happened. I prayed for her, nothing happened. And I was ministering to somebody else, and it was somebody who had been sexually abused. And all of a sudden, a repressed memory. What happened to this woman? How'd she end up in a wheelchair, and she had had surgery, and they left metal in her body, and it poisoned her system. And so she kind of blew up. And all of a sudden, she remembered who abused her, and she forgives. God touches her, and she jumps up and kicks her leg like a cowgirl. I'm afraid to do that because I might split my pet. <laughs> so I want you to start seeing yourself, Jesus touching you and walking. Okay? So everybody who's here, stand up and let's, let's praise the Lord for a minute. And then you get an hour for lunch or, you know, you manage that on your own. Let's praise the Lord for 30 seconds. And then I'm going to Come on, praise him. Praise him. Come on, praise him. Come on, praise him. Hallelujah. I say, give him praise. Hallelujah. Thank you.